Okay. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nathuri. Uh, well, for today's presentation, I'll be talking about oil and gas, um, particularly uh, the recent downfall of oil and gas uh, uh, oil pr production and prices uh, in regards to recent global events. Well, uh, I'll be talking about, uh, yeah, for the introduction, I'll be uh, talking briefly, hopefully, on the importance of oil and gas, um, the history and whatnot, but uh, the aim, I would say, for this presentation is that by the end of the presentation, I would ho uh, I hope to answer some uh, some of the questions uh, that I uh, would like to share with you guys, like what were the causes of uh, what are the causes of the downfall oil prices downfall, um, the effects, um, and you know like in some other countries such as in the Middle East, um, the uh, how oil prices um, used to affect. Um, from the Middle East, and uh, and uh, I will be also talking about some other countries such as uh, yeah, like the Middle East and also China and India, Europe and Russia uh, that is related with gas. So yeah, um, this uh, is known to everyone. Uh, I think that uh, oil and gas are really important for us, like. Um, we use them to power our house, um, our buildings. With, um, in, in other words, simply simply to say, they help the economy to be more productive um, as they uh, they run the energy in a country. So uh, another thing that is important about oil and gas is uh, are that they are the sources of energy from fossil fuels that um, are much are relatively cleaner than coal um, so um, it can, uh, like in recent years I would say that in the past decades there have been uh, more focus on uh, reducing the greenhouse gases so that is why oil and gas are um, are really important in that in that case Oh, and also they provide um, economic um, advantages such as uh, providing jobs uh, where, whereby in recent um, in the shell boom in the US uh, in just four in between four years uh, they increased the employment by 500,000 people so to illustrate how much oil and gas are being used um, globally uh, as you can see, the green line shows uh, for the oil consumption, whereas the red line here shows um, uh, natural gas consumption. For oil consumption, it's somewhere about like 34 to 35 percent, and for natural gas, it's somewhere 25 percent. So, meaning to say that over 50 percent of uh, global primary energy consumption uh, is from oil and gas. Alright, so the other day we had a lecture from professor, a professor's class um, saying that electricity is the main emitter of uh, global greenhouse gases. Um, meaning to say that uh, it, it, is, it is kind of um, uh, relevant that since uh, we are mostly using electricity and to, to explain more, I would say yeah, um, the number has increased for the use of oil and gas yeah, in 2000, in the year 2000 to 2014, uh, from 25.3 percent of the total consumption to 26.9 percent. But keep in mind that the increase is mainly from uh, more consumption from gas. That is by 1.6%, whereas the use of oil has been decreased um, by 3%. <coughs> and these are the top three countries uh, that consume the most energy in the world. So, for example, um, number one, China, the United States, and India. Uh, 
uh, Rick Brown of oil. Um, so in, in 1859, uh, Colonel Edmund Drake uh, discovered oil at, some, uh, in, at Western Pennsylvania. And this was because um, a professor in Yale University uh, discovered that uh, crude petroleum or oil uh, could be a substitute uh, as a source for um, illumination. Uh, at that time, from what I read, uh, like, uh, but you told me that at that time they used well oil, well oil, and that's um, causing the well oil, uh, uh, contributing to extinction of well oil. So yeah, um, in this case, um, uh, Dr. Benjamin Silliman Jr. said that um, oil from underground could be that uh, could be used as well for illumination. Right, so, in 18, uh, so Jeff, John Levison Rockefeller Sr. He is he was a he was one of the I think uh, he at one point is the wealthiest man in the world, uh, and that was because of he he was an entrepreneur, and in 1870. He formed an oil refinery company called Standard Oil. And the thing about Standard Oil is that it um, it, um, it is one of the, if not the biggest oil comp oil, oil oil refining company in the world back then. Um, and later they became uh, uh, they monopolized the oil industry. So. You can say that they, they like they had at one point they had sixty percent of market share uh, before they collapsed. Um, Standard Oil is is said to be one of the most valuable companies of all time, um, valued at one trillion dollars. Um, so one of the reasons uh, is mainly because of uh, they used to monopoly uh, they. They were said to be uh, monopolizing the oil industry uh, by acquiring other oil refining companies, by horizontally integrating, as well as um, acquiring other stages of production and distribution, like um, manu manufacturing factories or pipelines. Uh, they also raised prices um, like in the places that they had monopoly, and at the same time, um, they were able to reduce the prices um, when there are competitors in that area. So basically they control um, oil and gas prices as well as production. So, yeah. Um, over time they were, uh, they had to be stopped because of their uh, unethical practices, uh, that is uh, monopoly. And, but at the same time, they were quite important to the oil industry because of their usage of economies of scale. Uh, they were able to uh, provide cheaper oil prices, <coughs> and at the same time, um, they uh, revolutionized the oil distribution uh, by having technological advances. So, um, right after they had, um, after their, after the monopoly. Ended. Uh, one of the things that they do is that uh, uh, the company broke up and became subsidiaries of companies, and one of them was called Standard Oil of California, that is now called Chevron. Mm -hmm. So, as a matter of fact, this company, uh, Standard Oil of California, um, it is the it, uh, it is the company that discovered oil for commercial uses in Saudi Arabia in 1938. So at that time, there there was a, there was a exploration uh, where the Middle East has a lot of oil and the potential that that area has oil. And in 1938, um, Standard Oil of California um, managed to uh, managed to find the first commercial oil that is crude, um, crude petroleum uh, in Saudi Arabia. So, uh, but as um, as all of you may have known that Saudi Arabia uh, has the largest oil reserve in the world 
um, and has been the highest producer of oil um, until recently. And they are the top exporters of crude petroleum as well. Um, yeah, so in the Middle East, there are a lot of oil. Uh, they have a huge oil reserves uh, that is account. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, and then the Middle East would then be able to monopolize the production and price of oil. Um, basically, the industry for years, example, in 1973 uh, during the Yom Kippur War, which I hope to talk more about it later. Uh, about natural gas, well, I have a lot. I don't have a lot of uh, things to say for natural gas. Uh, it's just that in, in the 18th century, the first commercialized mm -hmm. use of natural gas uh, was used to mm -hmm. light houses and streets. But at that time, uh, the natural gases uh, were produced from coal. Mm -hmm. and, all right. And in the 19th century. Um, the use of natural gas, uh, yeah. as it was mentioned, it was exclusively, exclusively used as a source of light. But um, Charles Bernson invented the Bernson burner, um, where, whereby the, uh, the power, I would say, the power of the flame could be changed in laboratories, scientific for. Uh, scientific experiments, so this kind of um, uh, opened vast new opportunities um, with uh, natural gases. Right. So I'm going to talk about oil exports. So as of 2016, these are the exporters and importers of uh, crude petroleum. So as you can see, Saudi Arabia is the main exporter. Um, accounting 20.1% of total crude oil exports in the world, um, Russia in the second, um, and also for importers, um, there are China, almost 20% of total crude oil imports, um, United States, India, Japan, and South Korea. So, all right. I just wanted to share with you that if you, as you can see that most of the top six exporters of oil uh, in the world come from Middle East, Middle Eastern countries, uh, from Middle East such as Saudi Arabia, Iraq, uh, UAE, and Kuwait. And also for um, the importers of oil, majority of them come from Asia, such as China, uh, India, Japan, South Korea, uh, particularly East Asia, like uh, China, Japan, and South Korea, and also the United States. <coughs> For natural gas, however, the main exporters are uh, Qatar, Norway, Australia, the US, and Algeria. And importers are almost the same as um, the most importers of oil. Uh, Japan, China, South Korea are in the top five of natural gas importers. So I think I'm just going to. States, which is uh, one of the major exporters of natural gas uh, in 2016, um, it is recorded that they are they are the only country that has its petroleum gas value increase, and that is by 50.2 percent. So, meaning to say that they are quite relatively new in this in this sector of um, exporting natural gas. Uh, um, this is the global export of crude oil petroleum. 
uh, between uh, Saudi Arabia, Russia, the United States, and uh, for the whole and the entire world. So. So I'm just going to uh, mention this briefly that, for example, in the United States, you can see that from, uh, from 2012 to 2016, I would say that among these three, uh, these three countries, they have the highest um, growth increase in exporting crude uh, petroleum from around 3,000 uh, to 5,000. Barrels. Uh, whereas Saudi Arabia and Russia um, had like um, slight fluctuations, I would say, but they stay within the same um, amount of uh, eight thousand and seven thousand, respectively. Um, and also, I would say that uh, because of that, it also contributed to the. Uh, more export of oil petroleum in the world uh, as it increases over time to 2016. So the oil production uh, for this slide is correct. So in just between nine years, I would say 2006 to 2015, the United States um, I would, uh, more than half doubled their production of oil from 6,825 to 12,757. Whereby Saudi Arabia and Russia, the top two exporters of crude petroleum, mm -hmm. uh, only increased, uh, for example, 10,000 to 11,000. Uh, and Russia, just about um, not more than 1,000, actually. the production of oil, um, but, and this is for the prices. Um, this is during the recession where the, mm -hmm. the prices of oil, you know, um, just like any other, I would say, most of the sectors in the world at that time uh, were not doing well, but over time it <coughs> is improving. And suddenly, sometime in 2014, uh, in Starting June 2014 to be exact, the prices of oil started to drop. Um, and that's that's one of the it's kind of uh, those two are this are just the same uh, almost the same like WTI and Brent are just uh, different benchmarks for oil. Um, the one, uh, the other one is uh, much sweeter and lighter. That is the the Brent Brent oil. But nonetheless, they have been the um, I would say the, yeah to 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 check with the prices of oil. So. The drop from there. So, so what 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 are the main causes of such downfall? And suddenly in 2014. So before I share with you um, the causes of of that down uh, the uh, the decline of oil prices, we have to talk about uh, the oh, like. Cartel. So the um, oil producing ex exporting countries are are a, a cartel that, it, that consists of a lot of countries. A uh, majority of them um, are from Middle East, and you know there are other countries as well, such as Venezuela and Ecuador, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it is estimated that 81.5% of the proven 
group oil reserves in the world are located in Hokkaido <coughs> and controls 42% of the world's oil supply. Mm -hmm. So, as I, uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, Yom Kippur War, so in 1973, um, there was the Yom Kippur War uh, between Israel and Egypt and Syria, but basically uh, Egypt and Syria had the support of majority of Middle Eastern countries. And because the United States was supporting Israel at that time, the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries imposed an oil embargo um, um, to, to those who support um, Israel, that is, the United States. But other countries were affected as well, such as Japan, the UK, Canada. So, basically, at this time, the price of oil was at three, uh, three US dollars per barrel. Uh, but after, um, when they imposed an oil embargo, uh, they decreased the production about five. Uh, they decreased the oil production by about five percent, and the price of oil increased. Uh, more than half to twelve dollars, and yeah, at that time, OPEX oil market share was over fifty percent. So basically, since majority of OPEX members are from Middle East, um, in a way they uh, control how oil production and prices uh, are going to be. So, however, in nineteen seventy nine. There was the Iranian Revolution. Um, at this at this time, the production of oil was um, it was was disrupted, and Iran had about four to seven percent of the world's oil um, production. And because of that, because of the Iranian Revolution, um, the political instability caused uh, oil prices uh, to be more than double. Even though it was just a few decrease in production uh, by four percent, but there was there was so much speculation what could happen, and that um, resulted to a higher price of oil. So, although the Iran Iranian Revolution was not really um, a decision that was made by uh, Middle Eastern countries, like in 1973, where it was their intention to increase the oil prices, but uh, for in this case, it it still uh, affected the oil prices and production. Uh, so meaning to say that such political instability in the Middle East uh, can affect uh, the whole, the global oil production and prices. Alright, so the downfall of the recent um, decline in oil prices. So in June 2014, oil prices started to fall. It was at a peak of 115 US dollars uh, per barrel. But six months later, uh, prices dropped uh, below 70 dollars <coughs> per barrel. And in the next two months, it fell uh, to below 35 dollars per barrel. Uh, this happened, uh, the prices of oil dropped by more than 50% in just about 8 months. So what are the possible reasons? What are the reasons? So there was an oversupply of oil in the global market, uh, growth of production in the US, um, as you can see earlier, uh, clearly affected uh, the price of oil, and then they have the uh, technological advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, which I'll be talking more um, about it later. And also that um, Saudi Arabia, who is at that time uh, the main producer of oil, they were not willing to cut the production as they were able to survive with their abundance of oil reserves. So basically, the oil prices uh, did not uh, the low oil prices did not affect them. So they did not mind producing um, as much as they want. So there are 
possible political reasons why Saudi Arabia uh, they don't want to cut their production. So if they cut their production, rival countries such as um, the U.S., who are as I said, uh, who are entering the market of oil as they are growing their production, and also Iran and Russia, who are actually supporting um, Syria in the Syria war, the current Syria war, they are at the opposing sides where uh, they are um, supporting Assad and Saudi Arabia is supporting the opposition. So we're not be struggling as much if Saudi Arabia was to cut their own production. So horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing have been in the United States for quite some time, uh, in, probably in some time in the late 1940s, but it, they are actually a, a, a techni like techniques or methods on extracting oil underground. So recently there have been uh, technological advances now, a decade ago, and this enabled uh, the US to access and extract more oil and gas in its own soil. So basically pipes are instilled underground, uh, about 10,000 to 13,000 feet, and then a fluid containing water, sand, and a small amount of chemicals is uh, pressurized and injected into the wells, uh, penetrating the shell. Uh, so basically water, sand, and chemicals are injected and pressurized, and they, are, they drill the rocks here to uh, penetrate inside the rocks and obtain the oil and gas that they can offer. So and they take them back. So yeah, now that they have more access to their own um, production of oil and gas, this means that they don't import as much as they used to. Uh, actually, they are. Despite being um, number two of the top importer, mm -hmm. they are actually um, they have been reduced uh, their import by mm -hmm. sixty six percent mm -hmm. since two thousand and twelve. Mm As I said earlier, the, uh, the United States have been uh, relying less on imported oil. Uh, import oil. So, so this is how, uh, in the previous century, they import. Uh, they are importing uh, 
um, oil. But recently, in sometime between 2005 and 2010, this is have lived during the recession. So right after that, they have, with the help of technological advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, they started to produce more oil and gas and um, less than import, by 66% since 2004. Uh, the previous, this is the same as the previous data. Uh, I would just like to say that the uh, United States, as you can see, they are the <laughs> highest um, producer. Um, also, yeah, they even um, surpass Saudi Arabia and Russia. So in December, uh, it was forecasted that they will surpass a record high in, in the fourth quarter in 2018, but uh, what I read from today, um, this month's article is that it could be reached uh, as early as next month, um, the oil production record high. Okay, so what, um, so, so, that, so now that there is a high production of oil and gas in the world, um, an increasing number, and then there, the prices of oil, and oil uh, has decreased. So, what were the mitigations? What are being done now to to contain uh, the effects of this? So, in December 2016, after almost a year of negotiations and um, more than a year after oil prices started to fall, the OPEC deal um, of oil production cuts has been agreed by not only by OPEC member countries but also non-OPEC member countries. So they agreed to cut um, 1.8 million barrels per day. So, yeah, the main reason of this deal is to help increase oil prices, which it did by 9% to over 50 dollars per barrel, barrels per day, not long after the agreement. So recently, in November 2017, they continued um, to continue with the deal and extended uh, its duration by nine months to December 2018. So mm -hmm. that, during that time, the price increased at the such fall. So. So why did it take a long time? Um, one of the reasons is because of the proxy war that is going on between Saudi Arabia and Iran um, as there have been an ongoing political tension between these two countries for quite some time. And prior to this, um, during the negotiation of this deal, Iran was initially planned by, the, by OPEC to be exempted from the deal as the country um, was trying to recover from the interna international sanctions that were imposed to them and, and those sanctions were uh, lifted. So however, Saudi Arabia believed, um, Saudi Arabia wanted each member, including Iran, to, to cut their production. Um, otherwise, they threatened to produce as much um, oil production as they want and this will um, further um, keep oil prices low. So among, uh, between these two countries, Saudi Arabia and Iran, there is actually a conflict um, going on with Qatar, and it is somewhat related, although it's not related as much to the OPEC deal. So that is, uh, it is called the Qatar diplomatic crisis, where uh, in, uh, since Qatar is the, okay, so if you remember, Qatar is the number one exporter of natural gas. So in June 2017, um, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt, and Bahrain cut diplomatic ties with the nation, and the nation accusing it with 
supporting terrorism, um, and also uh, and at that time and all right. So actually, Saudi Arabia is important to Qatar as they export um, food, like, such as fruits and vegetables, to to Qatar. So actually, Saudi Arabia is this country, this land, and uh, so who so who now imports food to Qatar? It's actually Iran, yeah. which is this country. Right. So the tensions are getting higher between mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and Iran, and then suddenly Qatar um, are uh, joining forces in a way with Iran. So the, one of the main um, uh, negative impact to Qatar would be their um, airlines, Qatar Airways. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to be uh, lesser efficient um, because they could not um, travel to other countries such as Saudi Arabia they cannot pass um, these countries uh, actually and these are quite important countries Saudi Arabia um, as there are a lot of tourists and especially for the pilgrimage for example um, uh, however oil and gas are not affected as their main importers include Japan, South Korea, India, and Singapore. Um, none of the stated countries above, except for UAE, despite the diplomatic um, conflict, I would say, they still import um, gas from Qatar. So the main importer, so despite, I would say, um, diplomatic crisis um, and also the rise of U.S. gas production, um, it is actually nothing to be worried about since LNG's demand is increasing. Uh, many importers of this commodity in the whole world are stated uh, in Japan, China, South Korea, and the Asian countries. Um, so in 2016, Asia accounted 73% of global LNG demand. Uh, in 2017, um, these countries made up 60% of global LNG demand. So actually, China is growing uh, with their demand that they overtook the second spot from South Korea in May 2017. And it is expected that they, in the future, will overtake uh, Japan's um, spot as being the most importer of gas. Right. Uh, and also, the number of countries that import gas are also increasing um, from 2005 to 2015. So, why? So, another reason why LNG is quite important, I would say is that the aforementioned uh, the importers share similar characteristics such as um, India, Japan, South Korea, and China ha uh, are amongst the largest um, economies uh, in the world and they are mm, uh, particularly China and India uh, have been developing <coughs> quite rapidly in the past decade. So, And also China um, is targeting to use gas um, for its energy needs by 10%. 10 percent um, of its energy needs they want to get it from gas uh, by 2020 and by 2030 they hope to use gas uh, by 15% of its um, energy needs. It's just a uh, economic growth in India and China. Mm. So I will be talking in uh, right. um, yeah. 
the final country I would, I would say for this presentation is to talk about uh, Russian gases. Uh, in the case of Russia, there are Europe's main source of oil and gas. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of oil pipelines to different European countries. Okay. So, the Baltic countries such as um, Finland, uh, Czech, Slovakia, imports almost, I'm sorry, almost 100% of its natural gas from Russia, and 42% of Germany's natural gas comes from Russia. Uh, so yeah, the market share of Russia in Europe is really high, uh, t at 34%. They are the highest importer, and the highest source of import for gas. And it is also expected that mm -hmm. percentage will increase to 40%. So these are actually two of the um, two pipelines, two uh, natural gas pipelines across the Baltic Sea route uh, from Russia to Germany, mm -hmm. and it is quite new for Nord Stream, and Nord Stream Two is expected to be uh, operating late 2019. Uh, they are uh, so yeah, they help to distribute oil and gas more to. Uh, European countries, rather than having to transport to this country in a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, tra uh, transits. So um, the Nord Stream pipeline is capable of transporting up to 55 billion cubic meters. Uh, the Russian pipeline is capable of transporting up to 55 billion cubic meters of natural gas. And with Europe, that is equivalent to 50 traditional coal fired power plants, uh, 14 nuclear power plants, equivalent amount of energy. So, since uh, it is expected that the natural gas demand in Europe is to increase, there is another um, pipeline being built, the same pipeline um, called Nord Stream 2 that will meet the demand or 20% demand in 2020. In 2000, uh, as I recently there have been, uh, Russia was imposed uh, interna international sanctions by the United States and Europe. So it's called the CATSA, uh, also known as the Country of America's Adversary Street Sanctions Act. So, <laughs> as you can see, uh, last year, this is because they, they believe Russia should be sanctioned because of the annexation of Crimea, um, also uh, the alleged meddling in the 2016 US presidential election. So, the sanction areas are uh, finances, energy, and home sector. However, the gas industry is among the three industries that are being uh, excluded, and you may wonder why, but actually, as I said earlier, uh, natural gas is for Europe is really uh, dependent on Russia. So, if they uh, sanction um, their in energy uh, sector as well, particularly gas, and uh, that would not be a uh, benefit, they would not benefit from the Nord Stream and Nord Stream 2 gases into them. and that will lead to their economic growth to further slow, slow down. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, to conclude, I would say that not only oil and gas are important for our daily lives, but it's also important to um, political matters. Um, it, it is, in fact, important to Russia as it helps them to, to still produce more gas to Euro European countries. Um, the condition of oil production prices, uh, you know, back then, uh, Middle East used to uh, monopolize, and they have a lot of influence with oil and gas produ uh, oil production prices. But now, since the growth of U.S. Um, yeah, oil production, it, things have changed. Um, Saudi Arabia and Iran proxy war, Qatar diplomatic crisis. Uh, well, 
that's pretty much it, I would say, mm -hmm. as the conclusion mm -hmm. stated. Thank you. Thank you. Very good overview of, uh, of, of the oil industry. I think you've, uh, uh, there, we, there we have it. Um, uh, those, uh, so those are your, uh, your references. Um, very good, a very, very uh, uh, good overview of, uh, uh, you, you set out to, to talk about the, uh, some drivers of, of, of prices. I think you, you, you did a, a very good job uh, in, in, in doing that. Um, um, I, uh, and, and certainly the thing that you uh, uh, pointed out uh, was the, the effect of, 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 of the U.S. Um, uh, uh, the increase in production of the U.S. clearly. Huge, huge impact. There's, there's no question. Um, yeah, the, the, you, you pointed that out, and, and I would, and, and as you noted, you talked about the decline in, in 2014. Um, as I look, you can see uh, like Saudi Arabia kind of 2011, 2012, 2013. They, they level off their production. U.S. is increasing by 2014. Now it becomes the largest producer, and then that begins to have uh, a, a, an effect. Um, the, uh, in, what's interesting about oil is in certain ranges the elasticity, uh, price elasticity becomes very, very high. It becomes very sensitive to, to small, uh, small changes in, in, in output. So clearly uh, that it, the U.S. output reached that point. Um, and also if you look at uh, Russia, uh, some, well there was some increase overall if you look from 2000 uh, across these, uh, these countries. Um, some increase in Russia, but definitely the increase in the U.S., a, a huge, no question, a huge imp impact, and, and certainly very, very important that you, uh, that you, uh, you pointed that out. Um, it's interesting how you mentioned, certainly you brought in the, uh, <coughs> this, this effect. I, I, I think you spent a good amount of time, and appropriately so, talking about Iran and, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, and, and really their proxy, and, and really the two countries having uh, its kind of proxy war, I, I would say proxy wars, really, uh, in, in the Middle East. It's a, it's a fascinating thing. Um, uh, I, I, you, you might want to talk more about, uh, well, it, it's certainly interesting, the, the, uh, the, the religious impact, or the religious impl implications of that. Uh, um, uh, and, and, I, and I apologize, I, I, I always get confused, Sunni and Shia, because it's, for, for us it starts with an S, you know, starting with an S, and I'm, um, uh, but, but uh, Iran is Shia, right? Right, right. right Iran is Shia, the, the, uh, Sun, the Sunnis are, are, are uh, um, Saudi Arabia are Sunni, Qatar is which? Um, I do, I'm not really sure. That would be, Sunni. because I think, um, uh, uh, Yemen is, is 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 Yemen both Sunni and Shia? I, I guess so. I, mean, I think you want to check on that because you 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 didn't. I don't think you mentioned Yemen, but Yemen is certainly an important part right, right, right. of of this proxy war now. Is right, yeah. is Yemen as well as is a part as 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 well as Syria? Cert, yes. Certainly both Syria y Yemen. Uh, you 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 didn't mention that. I, it's. Um, it is, but it is, uh, but, but certainly you pointed out with uh, 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 with um, uh, Qatar, of course, very very important uh, in, in impact. Um, yeah, you you, uh, uh, you you mentioned about the flights. All of I, I know Qatar Airways. All of their their flights go is are to and from Doha. In, in the, they don't fly to any other. Uh, I don't believe they fly to any other location. In, in the Middle East, I think all of that is, um, but in, I don't believe they do. I've, I, I've looked at the statistic, the um, shipment statistics, and, and I think that Qatar, all of that is, is through Doha. Right. So it certainly, you know, as you say, they're flying a longer route. I think they must be flying through uh, Turkey, Turkey, yeah. Turkey and, and, and over, rather than through Saudi Arabia. It probably means it's going, that's going to affect their flights to uh, 
um, say, the west coast of the U.S. You're, they're certainly going to be able to get to the east coast, but it might have some impact. On the west. Anyway, that, that's just. Uh, um, I also wanted to. Um, great discussion. You, 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 your, uh, the introduction on on, on hydraulic fa uh, fracturing. Um, uh, simple but very important uh, discussion on that. Absolutely a huge, huge impact uh, in, in the United States that's uh, developed that technology. No, no uh, question. Um, one uh, thing that I think you'll want to, um, and, and, and talking about the, the effect of the, the, uh, the oil uh, shock uh, you mentioned, the Yom Kippur War, which was the, the beginning, um, and what's interesting about that is that Saudi Arabia took, uh, um, and, and I, 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 I was a teenager then, so I remember that event very well, both the Yom Kippur and, uh, and, and, uh, and, the, um, and the first oil shock. But the, um, uh, the, the impact, uh, Saudi Arabia took control uh, from, uh, uh, from the, uh, the Western oil companies uh, as, as part of that. So that was a really... Uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly an interesting development of, of developing countries taking control of their resources. Where the, up to that event, they, the, the uh, oil companies controlled uh, the, uh, had, had, they had the tight control, and, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and the other uh, Middle Eastern countries were able to basically said, These, this is our, uh, our natural resource, we own it, not you. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Uh, event. Uh, keep keep that in mind. Um, but no, very important noting of, of the certainly. I, I, I liked how you, you the, the effect of the Iran revolution. Absolutely huge impact. That was I, uh, what we called the second second oil shock. But you you noted that very very important. Um, and uh, uh, just an important important point you want to look uh, deeper into this as, as part of your understanding of the market. And, and I, I recognize you're just beginning to look at this. And I, I think as of, I think when you started this, you didn't know very much uh, about the oil the oil market. So I think you've done a wonderful job on educating yourself. I think you'll um, if you go deeper into this, you'll you'll want to to, to look more at, at some of the technical uh, aspects to understand. Uh, both the refining, uh, the the the, uh, uh, the the extraction, uh, and as well as the refining of of uh, of oil, uh, of of crude uh, crude oil, and, and its use. And in particular, you you noted about those um, uh, uh, those benchmarks. I I would uh, w uh, the uh, Brent is is. Wait, do you know where that's from? You didn't mention that. You should mention that. That's important. Uh, but but that's good. No, you mentioned Brent. I, I know there's a lot of things going on. Keep that in mind uh, the next time you bring that up. And WTI is where? Um, America. Yes. Yes, it is. It's West, uh, West Tech. Beads, West Texas. Intermediate. Intermediate, right. West Texas Intermediate. So those are, and you did know the price. And uh, the, the similarity of those, what is sweet? Do you know what sweet is? What does that mean, sweet oil? It has um, fewer, it contains lesser salt. Yes, salt. correct. Okay, you know that. Um, um, but So you, you did know that. And, and I know you could, it was something you were hard to remember in, in, a, pre, in a presentation. Um, but uh, uh, people will be impressed that you, you do know that. I'm glad that you were able to get it. What, what is, do you know what API is? API? Yes. Okay, that's the other measures, oh, okay. uh, and it's called and it's and uh, um, uh, the, the the API measure uh, is is the um, uh, is the wax content. Uh, so so that is your sweet and sour. Uh, um, your your um, I mean sorry, sour is is your sulfur content. The uh, the API has to do with your the amount of wax content, and and the the lower the API rating. Uh, the higher the the, the wax, it, it's a it's a measurement, uh, and of course, if you have more, uh, what the reason why those are benchmarks are, are is because they're sweet and they're light. So light has to do with um, uh, the API rating, and the higher the API rating, the lighter the oil. That means the amount of uh, uh, that means less wax in the oil. It's cheaper to refine. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
And so the, the direct, a direct relationship between the cost of, of refining the higher, um, those higher grades and, uh, uh, and that. So that's where that, uh, that comes from. That's another level of detail. But when you, that's where you, if you go down, start digging down. And of course, very good, you noted the difference between, of course, liquid LNG, liquid natural gas, and the, and the, um, that's because there's no pipelines. You, that, that's, these are, you can't have pipelines from Qatar to Japan uh, and, and from Brunei. Uh, I would have liked you to mention your own country. It's a very important exporter as well. You should be proud of that. Um, I think, you, of course, you are. But um, mention that. That's, it is an important exporter. Um, the, uh, and, and certainly huge impact on. The, how much, do, do you, does your country have much oil? Is, is it mostly natural? Is it, is, is it how, how much production of oil ah. does it have? Uh, actually, I prepared another oh. presentation. Oh, you've got the same thing. <laughs> because this is <laughs> Oh, that's yours? Yes. Oh, that's yours. Oh, okay. Uh, Great. <laughs> <laughs> I said, boy, he's got the same picture. All right, here it is. So, we, we've lost the, uh, the picture. I think you've got it. Uh, is it the right corner? The right corner there? Oh, it's actually the one production Oh, you did! No, no, my no, apologies. It's another, oh, another okay. Slide. Did, did it's you? Oh, different. I didn't see that. Okay, my apologies. Oh, I missed oh, that. Um, so it does have some. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th thousand. That's uh, two hundred thousand. It's not very much. Yeah. Two hundred twenty-one thousand a day. That's actually it's enough for. Um, that's like a, a mid-sized. Uh, um, it that that's enough for one mid-sized uh, refinery. Refinery. Yeah. You know. Not 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 uh, 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 not a huge one, but mid-size. It's a good amount. It's a it's a reasonable amount. It's a hundred times more than what Japan produces. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know it, it's it, it is a reasonable amount. Okay. Um, no, great discussion on, on on the U.S. and that important. Very well done there. Um, uh, agreement date and price effect. Can you go over that? I just wanted. That was very, oh, you made a very interesting point about the Nord Stream, uh, and you pointed out the nuclear power plant equivalent. That brings to mind something I wasn't, uh, I hadn't thought of, but that you brought up something very important with that, is that Germany is, is might we're very well be using this to replace uh, the nuclear power that's, that they're shutting down. I, I didn't realize that, so that's very, uh, thank you for, um, uh, for, for, for pointing out that, uh, that, that those two pipelines. Um, th there seems to be, you, you use uh, cubic feet and, 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 and cubic meters. Uh, was the U.S., is that in cubic feet uh, for, for natural gas production? It is a bit confusing. You, you might want to check and make sure that uh, you didn't use two different measures. Um, you said oil production next month. Are you talking about December 2017? Because something was confusing. You said oil production next month, but I think you were talking, uh, I think that was about 2017 and not 2018. It is uh, 2018. Like, so, um, that, that was confusing. Is it, you mean monthly production? Right, that, yeah. What is that? December 27th, oil will surpass a record high in fourth quarter 2018. The EI, EI said it could be reached as early as next month. That's yeah. So March? February? Uh, oh, it's this month. It's supposed to be this month. February. I mean monthly. I mean monthly oil production. Um, oh, quarterly. Quarterly. It's quarterly. Okay, great. Okay. I get it. That's fine. Understood? Okay. Wow. Oh, go, go, it's, it's the, the global economy is expanding. Absolutely, it's the global economy expansion. Um, it's, a, it's another sign the world economy is growing. Okay. Um, 
Uh, agreement date and price effect on the OPEC deal. Could you go back? I just wanted to check something on that. Yeah, see that? Let's see, we've got uh, the oil agreement. What, what month was the uh, OPEC agreement? Was Is that 20... December 2016. Oh, okay. Price still, f so you had that agreement. When, when did the uh, production cuts go into effect? Did you, did you mention that? Um, well. When did the cuts, did they go into effect immediately? Yeah, well actually, during this period of time, um, uh, Venez Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and Russia agreed to cut their production. Did you mention? I don't think you mentioned I didn't, that. I didn't mention that. You want to mention that? Yeah. That's that's important. So okay. it kind of played a role. Okay. That that that's important to mention it, but it uh, clearly you know it's a piece of it. You you've um, you got a lot of information. You learned very good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Any any other questions? Um, okay. Um, well, very well. That's a very very and and very focused. You kept it. It's very focused on on, on the subject. Uh, thank you. Uh, very very well done. Thank you. Um, and and I wanted to to thank all of you. These were really wonderful. Every, each one of you did a, a wonderful job. I'm, I'm really, really uh, uh, pleased and, and grateful for all the, clearly the work that all of you put into this was, was tremendous. Um, each one of you did a tremendous job. So um, I'm, I'm really, uh, 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 thank you very much uh, for your, your hard work. Uh, each one of you clearly learned a tremendous amount in, in the work that you've uh, he, uh, I've done. Um, uh, you, you've all. Uh, these, these are each one excellent, excellent work. Uh, each one of each one of uh, these presentations in their own way, and and they will be uh, graded accordingly. So, uh, thank you very much. And um, uh, for uh, I also wanted to thank you.